uh, it's a pleasure to be be here. And what is an evening uh, for me? I'm based in uh, the northeast of uh, the UK, so it's uh, it's definitely a, a cozy winter evening uh, on my my end. I've got my uh, cup of tea, which will keep me going uh, as we dive into uh, Nuxt uh, three. And I've taken on myself to attempt to build a Nuxt three Wordle clone. Um, I want to show you a little bit about how Nuxt three works. Um, there are lots of other better Wordle solutions out there, so go in and, uh, and, and check out some of those. But it should provide a way for us to dive into what looks like a real application. Um, and, and, and hopefully I can show you some of what I love about Nuxt. Uh, if you've not come across it, Nuxt is a framework for building web applications. And Nuxt 3 is in beta. Um, it's open for testing. I've just installed this uh, just now. It's the, the, the very latest Edge version uh, installed off of NPM. Uh, so we're going to encounter, hopefully, no bugs uh, along along the way. Um, and uh, I think that's probably enough from me. Um, so when you install your basic Nux3 application, you'll notice it's really minimal compared to what you're used to. Um, if you are familiar with a Nux2 application, for example, uh, there's not a lot uh, to go on. Um, the app.view file is our uh, starting point, uh, pretty minimal, uh, not a lot else. Um, so I've started our dev server in the background, um, and I, in a moment, I'll, I'll fire up a, um, a web browser as well so we can see what we're building. But in, instead of starting on the front end, I thought I'd start on the, on the back end. Um, so Nuxt has the capacity to uh, handle a lot of things uh, that a server would normally do. Um, and it does so using a new engine called Nitro. Nitro is a, a, a joy uh, to work with. You can just return objects directly rather than worrying about stringifying them, for example. Um, we're going to uh, create a handle, which is going to uh, take care of passing a guess. So somebody guesses a word, and we'll say, is that a valid guess? Uh, and we'll store the state as well. Um, so we're going to uh, support a handle. This um, define handle function just type hints it for us. Um, it doesn't, doesn't actually uh, do anything other than that. Um, so we, what we can do with uh, a Nitro uh, API call is just return something. So I could say word is guess. Great. Um, let's just perform a quick HTTP request. And we're going to get back post that request to it. And we're going to get back an uh, invalid guess. Leave. I may have a demo project running in the background because that is definitely far too advanced for this stage of the uh, of the, uh, the particular uh, demo. Let's fire that off and restart it. Okay, an X application is now starting on the right port, and we now have uh, a simple word. Now, what we're going to want to do is evaluate the guess that comes in, and then score it in some way. Um, so normally, if you're using Express, you'd get the uh, request body. Uh, but in this particular case, we have some tiny helper functions, which can be tree shaken out of the build if you don't use them, from this library called H3. Um, H3 is part of the UnJS uh, family of libraries. Uh, and it's, uh, it's designed for, for anybody to use and make, um, um, uh, hopefully, make a better unified JavaScript uh, space. Um, so we are going to first pull in this uh, body object and pull the guess off of it. Um, we'll say that's a string. And we won't say it's a string. OK, so we've got a guess. And we can maybe uh, check the guess in some way. So if there's no guess or if, uh, if the guess length isn't 5, then we can uh, create an error. Um, this is, again, a, a much simpler way to, to handle errors um, rather than uh, setting headers, etc. So we'll just say the, um, the status code is going to be, uh, say, 422. Uh, and we'll have a message as well saying uh, invalid guess. Okay, that should be fine. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. And uh, see what happens. Not, uh, this should be invalid because we've got no guess. 
If we give a guess, great, getting it back. Um, okay, now what we want to do is, is handle, is create some concept of gain state. Um, and I'm going to be uh, lazy and just create this in a, a global um, declaration file rather than uh, worry about um, importing stuff in and out. We'll call it uh, game state. Um, and we'll just make it a simple array of guesses and hints. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll make that an array of, of, of uh, tu tuples there. Um, so we'll, we'll say that what we're going to do is uh, uh, have a state, which is going to be a game state. Uh, and we'll just to start with, we'll say guess. And uh, maybe our hint is going to uh, involve numbers. So zero is a, a miss, and a one is the right letter in the wrong place, and two is, is exactly the right uh, letter in the right place. And we can just uh, return that um, specifically like this. OK, we've got our guess, and we've got some, some letters. We probably need to um, write a function that's going to score the guess. So generate a hint from a word and a guess. And uh, that's going to be probably quite useful in our, in our thing. But at the moment, we'll just hard code results. Um, so what we're going to do here is return the guess that was posted. We're going to generate a hint for a, a word and a guess. And we'll say pick the word is going to be uh, super uh, for now. So now we should start getting some useful information here. Invalid guess, what did I send through? Nothing. Add you, and we're now getting the guess that I made and the, uh, the score, which currently is, is not really particularly valid. Now, and the reason I wanted to um, put a server component in here is because we really don't want these guesses leaking on the front end. We want these to be, to be secret. Um, and it also, it lets us do all kinds of things, like interact with the database or something like that. Um, and ideally, what we do is we have an authoritative uh, state, which we can store, say, in a cookie, um, which lets us uh, preserve your state. So when you hard refresh the page, it remains in place. And we can get a server-rendered server uh, page with your guesses on them, for example. So uh, let's um, extract this and actually pull our state from a cookie instead. Uh, so we are going to, again, use a helper function called useCookie in this case. And we're going to say our state is going to be use cookie request. Um, and we'll say it's a, uh, the cookie will be called state. Um, but the only issue here um, is that uh, it's going to be a string. We probably want to pass it. So we'll create a little helper function called uh, decode, uh, which will basically just take a uh, string state, uh, which will default to uh, say, an empty array. Um, and we will pass that into um, our state. That seems reasonable. Um, and we can specifically say it's going to be a game state uh, because we are just not going to check. We're just going to trust it. We're writing a really quick application. And um, there we go. We have an encode function as well for the other way around. Um, so what we'll do is we will uh, decode um, our use cookie. And that means that what we should be getting back now uh, is, is an empty array um, from a cookie that doesn't exist. Let's see if that happens. Yeah, empty array is fine. Um, now we're going to push onto that state a new uh, guess and a hint. And we can return the state. We can do a little bit better. Uh, we can actually set the cookie as well. So response object. There we go, we can uh, encode that state. Beautiful. So now if we have a look at our headers, we're seeing our state is beautifully encoded in, uh, uh, our, our, uh, in JSON for us. Uh, let's see, before we jump into generating the, um, the front end of our application, which is much more interesting, probably want to just quickly generate a valid hint for the word. So we're probably going to want to have access to source word. Uh, we can treat that as an array of letters and uh, pull them out. We can then return um, the guess. Uh, and then for each letter in the guess, we'll first iterate over it. And if the letter 
is exactly the same as our original word of the same index, then we'll return true. So that's a, a valid um, guess, exactly valid guess. Uh, and we can also um, uh, delete the, uh, so set source i to be null. Uh, and otherwise we can simply return false. Uh, and that is going to mean that we have got a, uh, uh, an array of um, exact matches. We can then iterate over that again. And we can, we'll the index as well. Uh, we can now just return the exact numbers we want. So if it's exact, we'll return two. Uh, if source, this generated code is not great, is it? Uh, if source includes the, um, the value of the original, um, uh, if, it if source includes S of that index, then we can return one, I think, and then otherwise you return zero and we'll join the whole thing. Uh, and we will say this is returning a string for us. Let's see if that does it. So our word is super. And so what we want is a due to return. Seems right. Let's try super exactly. Okay, seeming right. Um, look, this is just off the cuff. We can uh, write some tests for that later on or something. Okay, so we've got a back end, which is setting a cookie and it's doing a bit of interesting, uh, interesting stuff for us. Let's jump into creating a page. Now, Nuxt has this pages folder, uh, and anything you create in there is going to be turned into a root for your, your app. So in this particular case, we can have, say, a, a home page, which says something like, uh, welcome to uh, Nerdle. And we can then add uh, just a link uh, directly to the, uh, the say, game page. And we can say, um, give it a roll of button, which I know I shouldn't do, but it, it'll make it look nicer. Uh, start a new game and section. Uh, I'm going to fire up a little browser um, just so we have an easy way of tracking what's happening as we go. And we're going to that, um, out. Um, now, the reason it's still showing that is that we have our app.view, which is our entry point for our app. And what we want to do with our page now is use this Nuxt page component, um, which will just um, render that individual page. But we can do, do all kinds of cool things with this, with the layout in app.view, as well as anything else that might be um, some kind of global state. Um, so uh, we might want to just quickly add a little bit of uh, other things. So we'll put a container here. I'm using a, a, a something called Pico CSS to give some, some styling mixed in with a little bit of uh, wind love via windy CSS. And, uh, and that, that's what's powering the, the, the graphics here. Say so made with love. And we might want to add a little bit of a nav bar. And we'll stick a link in the out bar, which just basically says um, little break. So that is all looking good to me. Um, we can dive into our game page. Uh, and now we should be able to forward. able to navigate. Oh. We want, probably want, might want to navigate to our game. Right. Okay, so what are we going to want to do on our game page? Um, Nuts has this uh, capacity to uh, allow globally registered components. So we can create something like a game board, which will then 
be available everywhere throughout our application. So our game board will have some props. Um, so we'll probably want to accept a prop of game state, uh, which will be an array. And we will likely in our template, lots of things we could do here, um, but we'll make it as simple as we absolutely possibly can. We'll create a list uh, of rows um, and each of those rows will have, say, uh, a list of letters on it. I think that makes sense. Uh, so we could say something like, um, or um, uh, what did it say? Guess, hint in, uh, in state. Uh, and then on our letters, we can say uh, for letter and index in guess. Uh, and then we can say uh, display that letter. Okay, um, and just to uh, speed up the process for the moment, um, we can add, say, let's stick that onto that page and add a default uh, value just so we can um, see what we're doing. So we'll stick a game board in here. Um, you'll see, by the way, uh, let's see, game board, and we will provide a default state, something like um, guess, and then 022. There we go, that's good enough for now. Just so we've got something to see. And yes, it is displaying there for us. It doesn't look particularly beautiful, but we can improve that um, in a moment. Um, so let's add a little bit of, of love to that. What do we want? We probably want this to be uh, flex, for example, and maybe a little bit of a gap between the letters. Uh, and we might want to change their appearance as well. So forgive the uh let's see make it block give them a bit of squareness uh center the text in each of the letters make them bold and we can make them uppercase as well uh excellent we now have a guess on the on the table um one of the things we'll want to do of course is give it a color so we can we can give it a color let's create a little hint map uh, and we can just map our um, possible hints, zero, one, and two, across to some uh, classes. So we could basically say, uh, put a dynamic class here, hint map or hint of the same index, and then we would expect that uh, to render out. So for example, we would want two uh, to be something nice and uh, greenish. Um, and we'd expect that, yep, we've got some green tiles. We might have a yellow, a black for contrast, and some gray, and some white. And there we go. We've got our first guess on the table. Um, I don't think there's a great deal more we need to do. This is a, a presentational component only. It doesn't have to have any state. So if we zoom back to our game, um, what we should have, um, actually, you should be able to see here that um, um, Nux knows about our game board, and so does your IDE. And in fact, if we were to change our state and pass something else like a string in, it will actually complain and tell us we've done the wrong thing. Um, I, I, I love that, by the way. It's, it it feels, feels really nice. So we can just pass a state in. I think now is the time for us to add some logic. Um, and the place to add logic is, of course, going to be in a Vue 3 application, almost certainly uh, in a composables directory. Um, so we can do something like uh, use game state um, and actually do all of our composition here. So we can pull out this state, dot, uh, return it, and we can actually just now extract that. So state equals use game state. And hopefully we should have the same kind of view. Yes, because the state is flowing through. It's now from the composable into the, um, into the app. What we want to do now is extract this game state from the cookie that we're getting back from the, uh, from the, the, the back end. Um, and we have a, a great uh, tool uh, called use cookie um, in Nuxt, which allows us to say, um, we're going to pull out the cookie, which name is state. 
uh, and we're going to render that into this uh, state variable. Uh, we want, and we specifically want it to be more than just a string. Um, and so in order to achieve that, we can pass some options to use cookie. Specifically, we need an encode option, a decode option, and a default value. Um, and I'm just going to borrow these exact same functions across from our server side so we get uh, just identical behavior. Um, I'd really like to do this in base 64 or something, but it's, it's slightly more complicated. Um, and we'll have a default value, which is uh, just nothing, something like this. Um, so that means that now we probably have uh, nothing because there is no value. We probably want a way to uh, set the state um, or to do a couple of other things. Maybe we want to um, submit a guess uh, and we might want to reset uh, the game or something like that. But for now, we want to, we want to submit a guess. Um, and so what we will want to do um, in a moment is we want to get a result. So the result is going to be an API call. We can use this uh, dollar sign fetch, which is an isomorphic fetch on server side. I think I said this just moments ago before my talk. Um, it will, uh, on server side, it will just call a function and on client side, it will actually uh, perform a network request. Um, so uh, we already know that that result is going to be the game state, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, and so probably all we want to really do is um, attach what we want to send. So it's going to be a, a, a post uh, and we are going to want to send a guess um, through. Uh, and then in fact, because it's game state coming back, we can just replace the current state with the new state from the other end. That's probably all we need to do to submit the guess. So we now need a bit of a UI just so we can make some guesses and start getting some actual useful stuff on the screen. Um, so if we have a game board, we probably need something like a guess form. Uh, we'll stick that in components as well. So our guess form, um, it's probably not going to have a huge amount of state. It's going to have a guess, maybe, uh, which will be a ref. Um, notice all of this, by the way, is auto-imported uh, by Nuxt for us. So our um, IDE knows about it, uh, and, and so does, so does Nuxt, um, which imports it correctly. So we'll want some kind of, let's see, a form. Um, that form will need to have uh, a, well, a submit handle handler, I think. Um, and what we'll want to do is when it has some kind of result, we are going, going to want to emit a guess uh, with, say, the value of, of the guess so far. Um, and uh, view three has a way of uh, handling that for us. So we'll say emit is define emits. Um, and we actually pass, we tell TypeScript what to expect here. So what it, it expects is that there's uh, an event type, which is going to be guess, uh, and it's going to pass a guess string. And so now this is fully typed and it, it, it knows what it's, it's, uh, it's emitting. And it also means at the other end, when we use this in our game, we are going to be able to actually have full type support with type coming through from a guess form. So we could do something like and guess, um, handle guess, um, and that's a function you see, uh, it doesn't exist yet, but guess is going to give us a string. So what we can do is submit guess and just pass that through and that's valid because submit guess is also expecting a string. Um, okay, so what are we going to do with our actual submit form? Let's see, we might need some kind of, uh, uh, sorry, I'll make this as simple as I can, label um, your guess, uh, we need an input. It will need to be, say, use this guess model that we created. It's going to be a type uh, text. We can use some native HTML um, attributes to give a little bit of validation. Um, and we can maybe give it some um, classes to make it match in appearance uh, the uh, display on the board. Something like that. And I might need to refresh. Element is missing in tech. Oh, of course, there's no label yet. Uh, is that displaying something? Your guess, amazing. Okay, and we probably want a button then to submit that form. Uh, we can disable it if the guess length five. Uh, it's a submit button and uh, yeah, we can call it guess. That's, that's fine, isn't it? Guess. So we have something like, uh, Ooh, should probably have a bit of a background color. 
Uh, there we go. Does that work? It works. Oh, it actually works. It submitted the uh, submitted the form, and we actually now have a, um, a scored result. Um, if we want wanted to do this, um, do a little bit more. What do, what do we want to do? We could try um, soups. Yep, that looks good. We actually know it's super, right? So we can actually just do super. And we have a result. What's more, if we refresh the page, the result is all persisted because it's all stored in a cookie um, and sat on the server side. So it all it all seems to um, to be to be working working fine as we might expect. Um, now, if we have a little bit of extra time to um, improve things, um, I think we would probably want to uh, improve our server side a little bit. So, what can we do? Um, at the moment, we've just hard coded this guess. I want to tell you about some amazing uh, features that um, Nitro has. I don't really have enough time to do all of that. But what it does have is something called storage. Um, it's an alias, which is um, typed for us. So we get full, full types for, for all of these kind of Nitro aliases that we get. And it's powered by something called uh, unstorage. Um, unstorage comes with lots of drivers. Um, and it has a, it's a, um, uh, it's a, uh, an isomorphic ap approach to handling data, database, key value store. So you can have any kind of driver, a Redis driver, a MongoDB driver, your favorite MySQL, whatever it is, um, and unstorage will let you interact with that. Or, or you, maybe you're accessing the file system or memory or something like that. Um, in this case, um, I'm just going to use memory, but you would be able to swap this out in production with anything, um, whether whatever your favorite um, serverless database solution would be. Um, so what we might want to do, for example, is do something like this. Um, I'll just, in the background, install uh, a word list, which I won't pay too much attention to. And we're going to do something like day is new date to ISO string um, slice 0, 10. That's right, isn't it? Um, we can then um, check, the, uh, check the state. So um, I'm going to say our word uh, is going to be await storage dot, oh, we have to mount our driver, I should say. Um, you can mount drivers to different sections of the storage. So we're just going to say um, mount um, to the base uh, level. We could also have subdirectories or something like that, uh, just a, a memory driver. Um, and that's going to store everything in memory for us. Um, it comes out of the box of the file system driver, which you can easily access. But in this case, we're going to get an item uh, for, for that day. Um, at, or we're going to pull a random word, which will be something like, let's import something from the word list. Uh, from word list English. And we are going to say valid words is word list. Um, there's one called English 10, which is particularly common. Uh, filter and the word length is going to have to be five. And we can say our word is going to be valid words and then maybe, um, yep, a random word from that list. And we are then going to want to set it, right? So um, await storage set item a word. There we go. So now we know. This word is going to be a string. And we have, hopefully, now a random word instead of super. Um, so if I were to, uh, let's give it a try directly. I'm going to make a guess. My guess is going to be super. It's, a, it's not right. Making it again. It seems to persist the word, whatever the word is in memory. React uh, seems still uh, to believe. Um, this is clearly going to be a hard word, and I'm not going to solve a Wordle live on air. But what we have done is we now have a, a word which lasts all day long, um, as long as the server remains in memory, which a serverless function might not do. So probably nothing left to do with this super minimal thing, but to say uh, initial version, and let's deploy it to production so I don't completely... Uh, get rid of all of the time for chat, which is probably something that we would rather want to do. So let's publish this to GitHub uh, public repository, Nerdle, which doesn't uh, exist so far. Um, and what I will do in another tab is just um, 
uh, register that on, uh, I'll, do, I'll use Vercel for this, import that into the project and uh, deploy it. Uh, and let's see how long that's going to take and we'll see if we can actually load that up in a real project. But I'll tell you what's happening in the background while that actually just deploys. When you run yarn build, um, we pull in Nitro to create a uh, single um, node server. And there are lots of other targets as well, which I won't get into right now. But what it will do is produce an ultra minimal server that has no runtime component. So you don't need nuts now that you've built the server. So if I were to look at that particular folder, you'll see it's 2.47 meg. 656 gzip, and that's all the dependencies, everything, all the node modules, all the client JavaScript, uh, everything you would need to run this server-side rendered app. Um, we could launch it um, just by directly running it, probably close the dev server, uh, launching it just by directly running it. And if we were then to open the simple server, we would hopefully have exactly the same result. It's rendering it up for us. Um, what's more, um, in the background, we've uh, deployed to um, we have deployed to uh, Vercel, and we can actually just load that there, nodal.vercel.app. Feel free to go there in your browser and play a game against everyone else who has been watching at Vue.js Nation. And if anyone fancies it, make a PR, and let's make this thing actually work. But I think I've spoken for long enough, and I'm sure people have lots of questions, and I would love to do my best to answer some of those. So uh, without much further ado, um, I will say thank you very much for having me and it's been a real pleasure.